great welcome, all of you uh, here, uh, also from uh, my behalf. Uh, Philip has asked me here to prevent a kind of introductory um, uh, presentation um, for this uh, conference, and I will do that by providing uh, a case study, not on landscape modeling, that's not my uh, expertise, uh, but I will do that on uh, Batavian society at the edge uh, of, uh, of empire. Batavians, uh, most of you uh, will know that, uh, th that there are people uh, living in the eastern half of the Dutch uh, rhine meuse Delta, here at the slide here uh, below um, at the right, um, the eastern half, and that's the area where Philip, uh, was part of the area uh, that uh, Philip and his team are uh, investigating uh, here. Um, I will try, uh, Philip told already, uh, to set the scene for several uh, papers that will be presented here by Philip and his PhD students uh, focusing on this uh, area. Um. Well, another reason uh, for me uh, to deal with this area is simply that uh, we have paid a lot of attention to this uh, region in the past two decades uh, in our research uh, here from VU University. Several um, uh, research projects funded by the Dutch uh, Science Organization have been uh, focused on this area and uh, that resulted in several uh, PhD um, uh, dissertations uh, edited volumes, um, uh, monographs, and uh, a broad range of papers, and this is just one uh, section of the, uh, the output. Our aim was here to study not only settlement patterns, uh, uh, subsistence structures, the landscape, but uh, more in a general sense, uh, we uh, aimed also to have an idea of the formation of tra and transformation of Batavian society in the context of the Roman Empire. Well, we can say that Batavian society uh, represents a special case in the Roman world uh, for several reasons. Um, one reason is the high quality and diversity of uh, the available sources. We not only have archaeological evidence, we also have a, a broad and relatively uh, varied uh, set of uh, historical uh, data and uh, also uh, important typographical evidence. The um, uh, second aspect is the specific geographical situation of the Batavian region in the Germanic frontier zone in the Holocene River Delta. That's a, a specific uh, geographical setting. And then thirdly, um, we have here a case in which uh, there is an intense interaction uh, with the Roman military community and that makes this area uh, special too. So we can say, and I'm not exaggerating then, that Batavian society belongs to the best documented uh, frontier communities of the Roman world. And uh, this region offers uh, a great potential for developing more complex models. These are the topics I want to discuss here shortly. First, a few words about the Romano-Batavian Treaty. Second, uh, the emergence of military families. Third, the settlement evidence. Four, a um, uh, view on major uh, rural temple complexes that have been uh, identified and reconstructed in the Batavian region. Uh, one slide about the transport infrastructure and uh, a conclusion. First, the Romano-Batavian Treaty. Why is this uh, an important aspect? Uh, I think uh, we cannot uh, understand the archaeological patterning we have in this area without considering this, uh, this issue. Um, that is uh, at the core of many developments we can observe and analyze in this region. I have two quotes here, both coming from Tacitus. The first one is from Tacitus Germania and I read here, immune from burdens and contributions and set apart for fighting purposes only, they, the Batavians, are reserved for war, to be, as it were, arms and weapons. And the second quote is also from Tacitus, but then coming from his Historiae, they, the Batavians, were not exploited financially despite the Roman uh, supremacy and their alliance with a stronger power but contributed only men and arms to the empire. 
Well, the conclusion is that the historical sources suggest that manpower for the Roman army was the major surplus resource uh, of the Batavian economy. And uh, we are dealing here with a very intense ethnic recruitment. And we can say that the Romano-Batavian Treaty was at the base of the extreme militarization of Batavian society and the formation of the Batavians as a soldiering people, comparable to, uh, for example, the Gurkhas in the, uh, uh, in the, in the, in the recent uh, British uh, Empire. We are also able to say uh, a few words about the uh, size uh, of the military recruitment. Um, um, and that are topics that have been explored in greater detail by Willem Willems and by Ivo Vossen. Uh, for the pre flavian period, uh, we can uh, calculate that there were almost 5,000 uh, Batavian soldiers in military service, uh, divided over eight infantry cohorts, one um, uh, um, cavalry regiment, the Ala Batavorum, and one imperial bodyguard uh, stationed in Rome uh, as uh, the, uh, the bodyguard of the, uh, the emperor. And then in the Flavian period and the early 2nd century, we have the impression that the, the level of recruitment might even be somewhat higher, uh, 50, uh, uh, 50, uh, 5,500 uh, soldiers in uh, Roman service. So these data means that there must have been a constant drain of manpower uh, from Batavian society to the Roman army. Um, and there have been calculations uh, uh, saying that, uh, w that when Batavian society uh, would have been able to realize this amount of soldiers, there must have been a minimum population of about uh, 40,000 persons. One, of course, problem here in this regard is the key question, to what extent these Batavian units were pure ethnic uh, homogeneous uh, regiments? Or was it a more flexible organization that recruits from neighboring tribes could be included in these units too? But we have the impression that at least until the first uh, of the beginning of the second century, ethnic recruitment in more or less homogeneous units was uh, a fair principle. Uh, and uh, that must mean then that uh, we have to realize that when we are excavating a Batavian uh, of a farmhouse in a Batavian settlement, that we have to realize that every freeborn Batavian family must have had one or two sons uh, in the army in order to, uh, to realize this uh, re uh, level of recruitment. And that there is also uh, epigraphical evidence. We have several tombstones mentioning uh, two Batavian brothers uh, serving in the same units, like here that one in Rome at our uh, here at the right below, uh, Indus and Ermines uh, serving as soldiers in the uh, in the imperial bodyguard in Rome. Then the um, epigraphic evidence. This slide uh, gives uh, an overview of all the evidence we have. Um, the first century in, in these columns, the first century, the second century, and the third century. Uh, a total, we have a total number of uh, 26 soldiers, uh, all uh, military men coming from the Batavian uh, area, and they specify their origins in different way. But far dominant is the uh, specification Nationa Batavus, Domo Batavus, or Batavus. So that clearly expresses uh, the idea that they cultivated Batavian identity much longer than we see it elsewhere in Gaul and in the Rhineland, so that they, were, they seem to have been using their, their ethnic label as uh, well, uh, a product that, that they wanted to be associated with that label. And um, two conclusions can be drawn, important conclusions from this epigraphical evidence. The first one is that military service led to a rapid diffusion of Roman citizenship among Batavian uh, families. Uh, after uh, ending a long service in the army, they received Roman citizenship. And so that spread uh, very fast, relatively, among uh, Batavian, uh, uh, in the Batavian uh, society. 
A second point is the continued popularity of the uh, tribal affiliation Natio in the Batavus, uh, born a Batavian. Um, that that uh, affiliation suggests that the Batavians carefully cultivated their ethnic identity uh, as a military race, like the Gutkas in the, uh, the British Empire. Uh, we can also say that this intensive recruitment led to uh, the emergence of military families. Uh, families that uh, provided generation after generation uh, a person for the Roman army. Uh, and uh, this is one example, an elite family uh, in the Batavian area, um, uh, mentioning uh, in had, uh, here two Batavian brothers, Julius Paulus and uh, Julius uh, Civilis. Julius Civilis was a leader of the Batavian revolt from 68-69 uh, AD. Uh, two brothers, both um, uh, uh, the head uh, commander of um, uh, an auxiliary unit. And these two brothers had uh, uh, three sister sons uh, here, Verax, Julius Briganticus, Claudius Victor. These sister sons also were commanding um, uh, military units. This is of course an elite family, but uh, we imagine that at a lower level of Batavian society you had a similar pattern, that uh, you have uh, members of different generations belonging to the same family, having that, that intense connection with the Roman military community. Then a few words about the rural settlement uh, evidence we have in this area. Um, we can characterize the settlement evidence uh, by saying that it is a highly decentralized pattern. Uh, agglomerations of settlements are uh, uh, very rare. Of course, we have the, the Kivitas capital of Nijmegen. We have um, a few camp villages uh, related to these uh, military camps along the Limes and a few so-called Viki in the interior. But the, the great, great majority of rural settlements are small uh, communities consisting of just a few households. Um, a second uh, point that can be made is that there are some examples of uh, Roman-style villa settlements. Uh, and here uh, an example reconstruction of a villa settlement, not in, not in the Batavian area, but at the sandy area below. But what is surprising is that this type of settlement is relatively rare. Uh, well, almost 90%, perhaps even more, belongs to the category of rural settlements which just have uh, uh, houses in a, in a, in a native uh, style, uh, buyer houses not these villas. Then mixed farming regime uh, that uh, characterizes the, uh, the subsistence basis, combining animal husbandry and uh, um, arable farming, and uh, that will be discussed in greater detail uh, in, in, other, uh, uh, in other papers. And then uh, another aspect, interesting aspect of the rural settlement evidence is uh, the evidence for returning veterans. Here is a slide showing some examples uh, of excavated settlements, more or less completely. Um, uh, settlements here in Wijk bij Duurstede and uh, Os uh, Ussen uh, in the Batavian area. Here that slide gives an overview of uh, excavated settlements, partially excavated, most of them, but also several that have been excavated more or less completely, and that gives us a firm impression of the, uh, the, 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 the organization, spatial organization and size of these uh, uh, local settlements. Most of them are uh, enclosed, and uh, here in these cases you see a lot of farmhouses, uh, more than 20, but we have to realize that these farmhouses are spread over many uh, generations so that the number of contemporary farmhouses is uh, two, three, four, something of that uh, size. So small uh, uh, rural settlements. And the dominant house type uh, are still 
uh, native style buyer houses combining a living section and uh, a buyer section under one single roof and we have several uh, variants of these farmhouses and we uh, are going to have now a firm uh, type of chronology of these farmhouses but that is the, the typical uh, living structure in this uh, area. Then we also have uh, uh, um, um, uh, the uh, burial evidence, uh, excavated um, uh, several uh, cemeteries in the Batavian region, and that cemetery evidence uh, confirms the idea um, that we are dealing here with small rural communities uh, of just a few uh, households. There are some uh, larger uh, uh, cemeteries like that of Til Passawai here at, our, uh, at the right, uh, and that's uh, having uh, mo several hundreds of uh, cremation burials, uh, but here we are dealing with a cemetery that was used um, in common by several settlements directly uh, situated around the cemetery. Then, as I told you, um, the settlement evidence produces evidence for returning veterans. Uh, it has already um, been the, uh, the idea, the, the hypothesis proposed by Wouter Vos in his dissertation, that uh, uh, the category of uh, hybrid uh, house forms with a wooden portico, uh, that uh, these uh, houses were probably introduced by auxiliary veterans in the um, uh, Batavian uh, region. Uh, but more convincing, I think, um, is even the, um, um, the, the mobile uh, metal objects uh, that are found uh, in large numbers in Batavian settlements in the, uh, the clay soils that directly refer to, uh, to the military domain and um, that uh, can best be interpreted as uh, evidence for uh, veterans that uh, came back to, their, uh, to the place where they were, bor where, where they were born after their, uh, uh, the end of the military service. Here we uh, were able to investigate that more uh, in detail in the, in the Til uh, uh, Passawai settlement. Here you see in Til Passawai, here in the center, uh, the cemetery, uh, here at the right the large settlement, uh, here in purple the farmhouses and all the red dots are metal um, uh, objects uh, that belong to the military dress of, uh, of Roman soldiers. Uh, weapon fragments, uh, belt fragments, uh, fragments of uh, military armor, helmets, swords, all kinds of uh, pieces of equipment and also um, uh, mountings of military horse gear. So that kind of evidence is found when you have uh, uh, d d uh, evidence for, for uh, of, of when the serious metal detecting has taken place, you find it in every uh, rural settlement in the Batavian area. Then um, the, uh, an interesting question is, did Batavian soldiers communicate with their families at home? And in this uh, context, the, uh, the, uh, the written evidence produced by the Vindolanda writing tablets uh, is very crucial. Vindolanda, a Roman fort in the north of, uh, of England, uh, and around 100 AD, a Batavian unit uh, was stationed there, and especially at that, uh, uh, in from that period, from that unit, we have a lot of small r letters written on uh, uh, writing tablets, that a part of the some of them refer to contacts uh, to letters that these soldiers received probably from their homeland here this is one example here uh, i have sent you pairs of socks from satua two pairs of sandals and two pairs of underpants two pairs of sandals and then greet and then uh, uh, soldiers are mentioned and all your messmates whom I pray that uh, you live in the greatest good fortune. An interesting material uh, data set in this context is also uh, the, uh, the great number of um, small um, um, seal boxes found in rural settlements in the Batavian area. 
uh, photograph here above right of these seal boxes, small boxes, a few centimeters in diameter. They have lit, lids with uh, enamel inlay. Uh, and these boxes have been used for sealing pack of, uh, packages of money or letters written on wooden writing tablets. And this category of evidence may provide evidence for uh, money transfers uh, for Batavian soldiers. Uh, abroad, sending money to their homeland, probably associated with letters. And here, a uh, distribution map of Til Pasamai, where we can see that uh, these uh, seal boxes were found in the, the settlement zone, uh, uh, and they were uh, circulating in or around the farmhouses, where these letters uh, and this evidence seems to have been uh, preserved originally. <coughs> Then, striking for the Batavian region is also the occurrence of uh, very monumental um, uh, temple complexes in the countryside. Uh, we have the examples of Empel, Kessel and Elst, and that are Gallo-Roman temples uh, of a size that is abnormal. Uh, you rarely find the, uh, temples of this size in the, uh, in the countryside, in th uh, more to the south in Gaul or in the Rhineland. And that raises, of course, the, um, the issue from where did the money come from uh, that was invested here in, uh, uh, for, for, for building these temple complexes. I think the most interesting idea is that we are dealing here with a, a kind of imperial pa uh, patronage uh, for financing these uh, buildings. But these temples played a crucial role uh, in, uh, for creating cohesion in the Batavian uh, world because they were region. They had a public function, a regional function. There is a lot of evidence for uh, uh, public feasting, for gathering larger uh, amounts of people at certain moments in the yearly cycle. So these. Uh, uh Temple complexes were really very important in this area. And as far as we know, they were also associated to a very specific deity, uh, Hercules Magusanus. Uh, and this deity seems to have been the main deity of the Batavians, uh, and uh, uh, it was a, a symbol of Batavian identity uh, as a military people, because Hercules is a, a, a special figure uh, combining martial and pastoral associations. And for the Romans, he was a deity uh, who explored the Roman frontiers. And so a very typical uh, construction here. And then um, the transport uh, infrastructure that will be discussed in detail by uh, Mara Kroenhuizen later. Uh, but we are already familiar for uh, several decades with the main uh, picture uh, presented here. We have here uh, an important uh, connectivity uh, of the Batavian area. It's not uh, an isolated community in the countryside. All kinds of transport routes play a role. Um, here in the south, we have the very essential uh, horizontal route, the main route, Bravet Cologne, and then the river transports uh, of the Rhine, the Meuse, and the Scheldt rivers going to the, uh, the delta system, where, we have, where you have possibilities to go from the Scheldt river into the, uh, the Maas system, and you can go into the Corvillo Canal and, uh, uh, and uh, bring your ships to the Rhine. And uh, the site of Rossum also plays a key role because at Rossum you could go from uh, the Maas River into the Waal and uh, from there you could go eastwards to, uh, to Nijmegen. So my conclusion is that the Batavian region offers an interesting and complex uh, data set. Uh, and um, um, secondly, the Batavian area has the potential for including a range of social and economic variables in, in, in modeling uh, work. And here we have also um, ample um, uh, potential for paying attention to trans transformations uh, through time. I think uh, this area is um, an ideal case uh, for exploring not only the limits of the LIMES, but also the limits of agent-based uh, modeling. And I look forward to the papers and the discussions we are going to have uh, in the next two days. I thank you for your attention.